Savitri and Satyavan have returned to earth, rediscovered each other living, and they are on their way returning as it becomes evening, returning to the hermitage. And then we read last week how uh, suddenly there's a, a noise, a growing noise of many voices and uh, people. And uh, finally they will see this great company of people with glittering golden headdresses and, uh, and striding in front, seeing clearly, is uh, King Dumatsena. And next to him, um, Satyavan's mother. And Sri Aurobindo described her face, how that careworn, queenly face has lit up. It's glowing like a beautiful evening sky that is looking forward to the dawn. So that's where I'm going to read from today. Her eyes, Satyavan's mother, her eyes were first to find her children's forms. But at the vision of the beautiful twain, the air awoke, perturbed with scaling cries, and the swift parents hurrying to their child, their cause of life now, who had given him breath, possessed him with their arms. Then tenderly cried Dumatsena, chiding Satyavan. The fortunate gods have looked on me today. A kingdom seeking came and heaven's rays. But where wast thou? Thou hast tormented gladness with fear's dull shadow, O oh, my child, my life. What danger kept thee for the darkening woods? Or how could pleasure in her ways forget that useless orbs without thee are my eyes, which only for thy sake rejoice at light. Not like thyself was this done, Savitri, who leads not back thy husband to our arms, knowing with him beside me only is taste in food. And for his touch, evening and morn, I live content with my remaining days. But Satyavan replied with smiling lips, lay all on her. She is the cause of all. With her enchantments, she has twined me round. Behold, at noon, leaving this house of clay, I wandered in far off eternities. Yet still, a captive in her golden hands, I tread your little hillock called green earth. And in the moments of your transient sun, live glad among the busy works of men. Then all eyes turned their wandering looks, where stood a deepening redder gold upon her cheeks with lowered lids, the noble, lovely child. 
and one consenting thought moved every breast. What gleaming marvel of the earth or skies stands silently by human satyavan to mark a brilliance in the dusk of eve if this is she of whom the world has heard wonder no more at any happy change each easy miracle of felicity of her transmuting heart the alchemy is Then one spoke there who seemed a priest and sage. O woman soul, what light, what power revealed, working the rapid marvels of this day, opens for us by thee a happier age. Her lashes, fluttering upwards, gathered in to a vision which had scanned immortal things, rejoicing human forms for their delight. They claimed for their deep childlike motherhood the life of all these souls to be her life. Then falling veiled the light. Lo, she replied. Awakened to the meaning of my heart that to feel love and oneness is to live and this the magic of our golden change is all the truth i know or seek O sage wondering at her and her two luminous words westward they turned in the fast gathering night. We're starting this side, I think, yes. Mm -hmm. the, place, the first two signs, the children So her eyes, Satyavan's mother, sees him first of all that crowd of people. She sees him and Satyavan together. But uh, then all the people see them. And when they see them, there, there's a great noise arises at the vision of the beautiful twain, these two people. Hmm? The air awoke perturbed, troubled, with scaling cries, getting higher and higher, oh, the cries, and the swift parents hurrying to their child. Dumat Sena and his queen, they rush to embrace their children. No? Their child, Satyavan, who is now their cause of life, their reason for living. They have given him birth. Hmm? given him breath he's their child but now they are they are only living for his sake hmm? 
So they embrace him, possessed him with their arms. Yes. I have a, so it's possible, I have a one question. You tell uh, is the mother of uh, Satyavan. Hmm. Is some aspect of the mother? Well, of course, all mothers are some aspect of the mother. <laughs> no, but here, this is his physic. This is his physical mother, the wife of Dumatsena, and she has a name. All Indian people know her name, but I have forgotten it. I'm Malavi. sorry. Hmm? Malavi. 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 Thank you. Yes, Queen Malavi. Yes. Now so, I know everybody's aspect of the mother, but now I know to mm. exactly. Mm. No, this is a very tender human scene, no? Yeah. That, uh, yeah, yeah. The, the, they have been missing, no? They should have been there and they are missing. So now the, this huge party has come looking for them. And uh, naturally the parents are very relieved and happy to see him. And then uh, Dhyumatsena, the king, scolds him a bit, but tenderly, as a father, as a loving father, may scold his child. Bebel. Then tenderly, quiet Dhyumatsena, chiding Satyavan, the fortunate gods have looked on me today, the kingdom seeking with fear, with fear. Mm, thank you. So tenderly, Dumatsena chiding, scolding Satyavan. And he says, wonderful things have happened today. The fortunate gods have looked on me today with their blessing. A kingdom seeking came. Just in these three words, um, four words, uh, Sri Aurobindo tells us that uh, Dumatsena on this day has been asked to return to rule his kingdom. Well, messengers have come looking for him to mm -hmm. offer him the kingdom, kingdom back. And heaven's rays, he can see again. He was blind, now he can see. So these two miracles have happened on this day. But where were you? No? You have tormented gladness with fear's dull shadow. Of course he was so glad that the his kingdom is restored and that his sight is restored. But where is Satyavan? What has gone wrong? Why is he not there? No. The dull shadow of fear has spoiled that, some of that gladness. No. Because you're my child, you're my life. Alice. Alice, would you? What danger kept thee for the darkening woods? Or how could pleasure in her ways forget that useless orbs without thee are my eyes, which only for thy sake rejoice at life? Hmm. So what has kept you? It's getting dark now. And uh, where have you been? What, why, what has delayed your return? Or were you just enjoying yourself so much that you forgot that my eyes are just useless without you? Of course, when he was blind, um, that was true. But even when his sight has come back, he feels that if Satyavan is not there, uh, what use are these eyes? No? How was it to know that uh, how Satyavan How was Satyavan to know? Yeah, of course he should know, but I don't understand why they asked him this question. 
why he's asking him. Well, of course, formally it was that Satyavan was always helping his father. So the orbs were useless. Now he's telling him that, look, I've got my sight back, but what use is it to me if you were not there? No? So that gladness has been tormented by, f by anxiety, by fear, because you were missing. No? And now I'm only enjoying my eyesight for your sake, because you are there for me to see. No? Uh, Kamala. Not like thyself was this done, Savitri. Who makes love back thy husband to a heart? No one with him beside me one little stand. In food and for his touch, evening and morning, I live content with my remaining days. Mm. So then Dumat Sena scolds Savitri a little bit. No? He says, this is not like you, Savitri, no? And that you didn't bring your husband home so that we were so anxious because you know very, very well that I can't eat unless he is with me. And uh, I'm living to feel his touch in the evening and the morning. That's the only thing that keeps me alive, that lives, makes me content with my remaining days. Hmm. So how does Satyavan reply? Bar, you will read? Hmm? But Satyavan replied with smiling lips, lay all on her. She is the cause of all. With her Enchantments. Enchantments. She has twined me twined them. Me yes. So Satyavan says, yes, blame her. It's all her fault. No? She has been uh, entangling me with her enchantments. But then he explains what he means. Uh, tone. Hmm? Behold, whom leaving this house of clay, I wandered in far off eternities. Yet still, the captive in her golden hands, I tread your little hillock called green earth, and in the moments of your transient sun, live glad among the busy, the busy, the busy works of men. Yes. So he says, at noon I left my body no? and I've been wandering in far eternities. But still, because she kept me captive in her golden hands, here I am walking on this green earth, this little hillock. This little hill, small hill. And in the moments of your transient sun, this sun of yours which will not last for eternity, but still I'm happy to be here. I live glad among the busy works of men. We're all so busy all the time. No? He's been in eternity and in infinity. But he says, she's kept me captive and brought me back here. And what you Yes, but no, you, you with you people, no? He, he's been in another world altogether. Right? Would you like to read, Ma? Then all eyes turned their wondering looks where stood a deepening red of gold upon her cheeks, with lowered lids the noble, lovely child, and one consenting thought moved every breast. Yes, so they all turn and look at Savitri, because he said, blame her, she's the one who's responsible. No? There she stands. She has always had a kind of golden complexion, 
but now she's blushing. There's a deeper, redder gold upon her cheeks, and she's lowered her eyelids. She's looking down very shy, shyly. And she is, of course, a very young woman. She's only 16 or 17 or something. So when they look at her, they all think the same thing. They all have one consenting thought. It's coming to the heart of every one of them. And that thought is expressed in the next sentence. Mila. What being the mother of the earth or skies Yes. So what what is this amazing being? This gleaming marvel, she seems to be spreading light. No? Does she belong to the earth or does she belong to the skies, to heaven? No? There she is, standing silently by Satyavan, who is very evidently human, and she's marking a brilliance. There's a light around her in this uh, evening dusk, in this twilight. And then they say, if this is she of whom the world has heard. Right at the beginning of the book, we're told that as uh, Savitri was growing up, no, the, her, her name ran murmuring on the lips of men. People heard about her. Mm -hmm. So this is she. She's the one that the world has heard about. So we don't need to wonder anymore, not, we don't need to be surprised at any happy change which happens. Kingdoms coming back, eyesight returned, what the, whatever it is. Each easy miracle of felicity, of happy miracles, no, is the alchemy. It's the, the, uh, actually the transformation, the transmuting change that she brings about through the power of her heart. Each easy miracle of felicity of her transmuting heart, the alchemy is. The words are changed, the order of the words are changed for poetic reasons. You'll read, sir. Then one spoke there who seemed a priest and a sage. O moon soul, what light, what power revealed, working the rapid marvels of this day, opens for us by thee a happier age. So he asks her, what is her power? What is the source of her power? Your woman soul, what is the light, what is the power that you've revealed that could bring about the rapid marvels of this day, all these miracles, the return of the eyesight, the return of the kingdom, Satyavan's return to life. It seems as if you have the power to open up for us human beings a whole new age of happiness. What is that power? He asks her. Shamala. And lashes fluttering upwards gathered in to a vision which has scanned immortal things, rejoicing. Human forms are there they like. Hmm. So she had lowered her eyelids, no? Now she looks up and she looks at all these forms around her, these, uh, these human forms, and she rejoices to see them all. She feels delight at seeing them all. 
with this vision of hers which had seen scanned immortal things, the same power of vision which she has seen all these amazing things in the subtle worlds. Lela. They claimed for their deep child-like motherhood the life of all these souls to be your life, then falling their delight. Yes, so her eyes claimed the life of all these souls to be her life. She identifies with all of them. No? And Sherbindor says she does that as a mother. But this is a deep, childlike motherhood. She's still a very young woman and she keeps that quality, that youthful quality, even in this accepting all these souls as her children as her own. And then she lowers her eyelids again. And then she replies, Varada Rajan. No, she is black. Awaken to the meaning of my heart. That to feel love and oneness is to you. And this the magic of our golden chain. In all the truth I want to see. Hmm. So this is the, the Mahavakya of Savitri. No. Mysterious message. He's asked her, what is the power? No. And this is her reply. I've awakened to the meaning of my heart. And that meaning is that to feel love and oneness. That's really to live. And this knowledge or this feeling is the magic which could bring about this golden change. Mm -hmm. That's all the truth I know. That's all the truth I look for, O oh, sage. No big words, nothing so simply. And yet they are so mysterious and suggestive, these words. Jerry. Wondering at her, at her two luminous worlds, restless returns and fast into the night. Mm -hmm. So that whole crowd of people, they, they don't understand what she has said. They are wondering at her, at Savitri, and at these words which are so full of light that they are difficult to understand. So the whole company turns westward. They are on the northern side of the foothills of the Himalayas. And in order to return to the, king, to the kingdom of Shalva, to the capital city of Shalva, they have to now turn westward. And the last section will tell us about that return journey. Shala, yes. Do you think Satyavan understood her? Yes. It's do you think Satyavan understood her? Understood her? I, I think so, yes. <laughs> if anybody understood her, I think it must have been Satyavan. Yeah. So, Joel. Hmm. From the entangling virtues, free they came into the dimness of the sleeping earth and traveled through her faint and slumbering plains. Yes. So, the virgins, the virgins of the forest, they. they leave those behind. They are freed. They come into a dimness. It's becoming night. No? The sleeping earth and traveled through those plains towards the capital city, which they can only see faintly. No? They are sleeping already. Uh, 
Sergei. Yes. So many, many people traveling together. So it makes a noise, murmur, and movement, and the tread of men. Some people are on foot. The sound of that movement is breaking that solitude and silence of the night. The neigh of steeds, horses, a neigh, that is the sound that horse, a horse makes. No? The neigh of steeds rose from that indistinct and voiceful sea. That procession is almost like a sea. There's so many people and it can't be seen distinctly, but the people are talking among themselves. There are many voices. No? It's a voiceful sea of life. And as that sea of life flows, marches forward, all along its marchings, swelled, rises the noise of the rhyme of hooves. And the sound of the chariots, they make a noise, the wheels of the chariots as they move along. And those chariots are hurrying homeward towards home. What is the hooves? Hooves, the, the feet of the horses. They make a special sound, no? The sound of horses when they move. <laughs> then um, you can read Ganga Lakshmi. Yeah. Drawn by wild men, of a wild roof cow, the flare of unsteady torch and with me. And Sajaman and Sultri. Within the marriage march and Lucia Field, we awaited then the many voices you are Yes. So they are in a chariot, in a high roofed car, and they're being pulled by white horses. The manes are the hair of the horses, no? white horses. And as they move, uh, people are walking beside them or riding beside them with torches, the old kind of torches with flame. You know? So those torches are flaring, it's a flickering light. Hmm? Savitri and Satyavan are sitting in this high roofed car holding hands with linked hands and people around them are singing a marriage march, singing and perhaps playing musical instruments also. A marriage march and nuptial hymn. Nuptial it also has to do with marriage. No? A, a marriage hymn. And they are moving to where the many-voiced human world is waiting for them. This is actually the whole point of the poem. <laughs> when we first started Savitri Bhavan, when we first started building Savitri Bhavan, uh, somebody told me, but why do you want to build anything? The story of Savitri and Satyavan, it's all about the forest. You can just go on meeting under the trees, as of course we were doing at that time. Um, but I had to tell him, I said, no, the point is the many-voiced human world. That's where Savitri and Satyavan are going. Uh, the, their story has happened in the forest, but it's for the benefit of the whole busy lives of men. Andrea, you would read? Numberless, the stars swam on their shadowy field, describing in the gloom the ways of light. 
That's another beautiful description, isn't it? The stars. As you're moving along, it's as if the stars are also moving and they are there lighting up their shadowy field. And what the stars do is in the darkness they indicate the ways of light. The symbolisms of the stars, the many stars, it's the many truths, the ways of light. Janaka. Then why do they start yeah, the start of your passion? Lost in the hall of her musing road. Night, splendid with the moon dreaming in heaven, in silver peace possessed a luminous land. Yes, this is the night. No? This poem started with a very, very, very dark night. There was no moon. No, there was nothing like that. But now, while they are skirting, going along the southward verge of the forest and the mountains, they see the, the moon. So the night is there as if in trance, lost in the halo, in that surrounding radiance of her musing brows. Perhaps there are some clouds there which are lit up by the moon. This night, splendid with the moon, dreaming in heaven, in silver peace, possessed her luminous reign. She will reign now through some hours until the next dawn comes. Subo. She brought her to her students in one day thought. He brought her to her mystic form of life. And it had also grows a greater blood. This is she is night. Night is brooding. When somebody or something is brooding, it means that something is going to come out. Something is going to hatch or be born, going to be expressed. You know, it's the image of the mother bird sitting on her eggs. So the night is brooding. In her, this stillness of the night, she's brooding on a thought, a thought that's guarded deeply within her by her mystic folds of light, as if the darkness is just a, a dense form of light. No? In her bosom, she is nursing a greater dawn. The poem started before the dawn on this day. No? Now the night is going to bring a greater dawn, a dawn that will be greater because of all that has happened during this one day from the beginning of the poem to the end. <laughs> Her eyes were first to find her children's forms. But at the vision of the beautiful twain, the air awoke perturbed with scaling cries, and the swift parents hurrying to their child, their cause of life now, who had given him breath, possessed him with their arms. Then tenderly cried Dhyumatsena, chiding Satyavan. The fortunate gods have looked on me today. A kingdom seeking came and heaven's rays. But where wast thou, 
Thou hast tormented gladness with fear's dull shadow. O oh, my child, my life, what danger kept thee for the darkening woods? Or how could pleasure in her ways forget that useless orbs without thee are my eyes, which only for thy sake rejoice at life? Not like thyself was this done, Savitri, who leads not back thy husband to our arms, knowing with him beside me only is taste in food, and for his touch evening and morn I live content with my remaining days. But Satyavan replied with smiling lips, Lay all on her, she is the cause of all. With her enchantments she has twined me round, Behold, at noon, leaving this house of clay, I wandered in far-off eternities. Yet still, a captive in her golden hands, I tread your little hillock called green earth, and in the moments of your transient sun, live glad among the busy works of men. Then all eyes turned their wondering looks, where stood a deepening redder gold upon her cheeks, with lowered lids, the noble, lovely child. And one consenting thought moved every breast. What gleaming marvel of the earth or skies stands silently by human Satyavan to mark a brilliance in the dusk of eve. If this is she of whom the world has heard, wonder no more at any happy change. Each easy miracle of felicity of her transmuting heart, the alchemy is. Then one spoke there who seemed a priest and sage. O woman soul, what light, what power revealed, working the rapid marvels of this day, opens for us by thee a happier age. Her lashes, fluttering upwards, gathered in to a vision which had scanned immortal things, rejoicing human forms for their delight. They claimed for their deep, childlike motherhood the life of all these souls to be her life. Then falling veiled the light. Lo, 
she replied. Awakened to the meaning of my heart, that to feel love and oneness is to live. And this the magic of our golden change is all the truth I know or seek, O sage. Wondering at her and her two luminous words, westward they turned in the fast gathering night. From the entangling verges freed they came into a dimness of the sleeping earth and travelled through her faint and slumbering plains. Murmur and movement and the tread of men broke the night's solitude. The neigh of steeds rose from that indistinct and voiceful sea of life, and all along its marching swelled the rhyme of hooves, the chariot's homeward voice. Drawn by white manes, Upon a high-roofed car, In flare of the unsteady torches went, With linked hands, Satyavan and Savitri, Hearing a marriage march and nuptial hymn, Where awaited them the many-voiced human world. Numberless the stars swam on their shadowy field, describing in the gloom the ways of light. Then, while they skirted yet the southward verge, lost in the halo of her musing brows, night, Splendid with the moon dreaming in heaven, in silver peace possessed her luminous reign. She brooded through her stillness on a thought deep guarded by her mystic folds of light. And in her bosom nursed a greater dawn.